Hey, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm, and I'm here on the farm on a wet and muddy day. And in that bed, you'll see behind me, I have planted 34 new rose varieties. This is what we're going to call the test garden. I'll explain what I mean as we go through it, but I'm just going to breeze through it really quickly because some of you might be interested in the varieties I'm putting in there. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just go through quickly enough that I can put up a picture or a description of the rose as we go along. Let's have a look. Okay, so I only briefly introduced you to this bed last year as I was going through the concept of it. And we just laid down a patch of a mix of, of composted bark mulch, municipal compost and sand. And these are the rose varieties and they've come to us through trading. This is a uh, Dems de Chenonceau. And you'll notice that these roses are a little bit on the small side yet. These came from trades or uh, cuttings that we've uh, rooted from last year so there's still a little bit on the small side uh, that is Charles Austin next one here is Anna Kathleen I may have pictures for that one uh, but I believe it's a, a Denning Rose or Robin Denning I'll talk about him more in a minute uh, this one is Peach Blossom and you may see that a disproportionate number of these roses are David Austin roses uh, just by the peculiarities of who we get them from uh, they sometimes have preferences of what they'd like to trade out and so that's that uh, that's one Feng Yon I think that's a Barden Rose actually uh, Summer Song so that's another Austin I believe and Lady Jane Grey, a hybrid tea rose. This one here is Happy Child. Uh, Prospero is the next one here. And Allegra, which is listed as a Gallica. I wonder if that's another Barden. Just moving around the corner here. Let's get to the next one here. This is La Rose de Molinard. This is the prince next one here is called remembrance that's a great name because people sometimes want memorial roses this is english garden next one here is amazing grace a hybrid tea and again most of these come from cuttings i'll let you know if there's any exceptions to that this is saint cecilia uh, remember me Another rose that's going to be outstanding for Memorial Rose. Uh, Mary Magdalene is the next one there. This one is Dark Lady. I saw that one up at the uh, Summerland Garden and was very impressed by the color. So Rick gave me a uh, cutting of that. This one actually is a grafted rose or a came from bare root to us. It's called Secret. And I just noticed it's a little bit older and so I wanted to give it a try in the garden. Sometimes with these older varieties you don't know how long they'll stay in commerce. So I thought I'd grab it now and try it out. This is Jane Austen. This one is Licht Konigen Lucia, which I think means Light Queen Lucia. So that'll be interesting to see what that does. Sharifa Asthma. This one is a Floribunda called Pretty Lady. I haven't grown any of these really in the garden, which is the point of a test garden here, is to see how they do before I commit to growing them on and propagating them. This is Jeff Hamilton. This next one is a, the Rosalind Rose. That's another one of the uh, Denning roses I mentioned. Robin Denning was the owner or is the owner of Brentwood Bay Nurseries out in Victoria, and I've gotten some from him. And typically he names them after family members. I think this is probably his wife's sister. Uh, some of his better named roses or better known roses. One is named after his wife herself, which is Betsy Sinclair. And the other one is Michelle Trudeau, which is named after a nephew. This one is Kerning Mill been after that one for a while because the color that's a David Austin rose and that sort of coppery color this one is Joy Bond again another Denning rose I'm not sure who that one's named after this is Fisherman's Friend which I believe is another David Austin rose uh, if I'm not mistaken named after a cough lozenge which is kind of unfortunate but oh well okay this rose is very very small and I was gonna say that this is where my impatience comes into play here because the next three roses are all very very small and i just i didn't want to come and revisit this project so i made sure they were well rooted in the pot but then i went ahead and put them out here because it is our most favorable season that is lighter rose there the next one is heavenly rosalind which is not the denning rose i just passed which is just called the rosalind rose this is 
Ambridge Rose, and just two more in this bed here. This is Chartreuse de Parme. Uh, I wonder if that's a Delbard Rose or a Barney. And this one is Devoniensis, which would be one of my only tea roses in the garden, true tea roses. And uh, just as we pass it here, this uh, oh, art installation is a burnt out stump. Uh, has some some bulbs in it but it also has radio times which is starting to put on some weight from last year now at the same time last year that i was introducing the concept of us doing a test garden i also put up these the structure you see at the back there sort of the pergola structure and uh, we put some climbing roses on there i showed you some of those as we walked through over the winter period but i just wanted to update you quickly with our final selections for this because we've uh, actually planted more uh, since that video. On this corner here, we have Climbing Fairy. On this corner here, uh, Cressida, which is an Austin rose, but I'm given to believe that it should be a pretty good climber. Uh, this is Monsieur Tillier. So another tea rose came to me in a trade, and this one is Ramblin' Red. I think I already showed you Isabella Skinner and Compassion planted last year, made it through the winter beautifully. And I did wait to put in uh, Crepuscule, which is a tea noisette rose, maybe a little tender, so I didn't want to chance it. On the uh, back one here, I have Blushing Lucy on this corner. I have the Impressionist on this corner here. And I really would love to hear from some of you who have grown these roses, what's your impression of them? I mean, part of the idea of the trial garden is to get people's opinions on whether we should continue to grow them on. This one here is called Mel's Heritage. And the final one I'm gonna show you today is called Summer Wine. All right, well, it's uh, wet. I'm gonna get out from the, the rain and save my video equipment. But if uh, you have any questions about this or comments particularly, please feel free to drop those down below the video. Be happy to hear from you.